what? In Indonesia, people. if a woman wants to join the military, she has to undergo what they call the two-finger test. What? They put that, that in her. Dirty. It is dirty. They want to see if she's a virgin. And this is the moderate country that they hold up as an example. And look, and this is part of the U.S. of the U.S. foreign policy is trying to promote. So LGBT let me get, let me see if I've got you straight here. So you want our president, whether it's Trump or Obama or Clinton or whomever, to go out and declare war on all these people who don't believe the way you do? Where'd you get that? Well, what, when what, did I say what, declare what do you do war? about it then? I said get real. Oh, get real. Okay, what does that mean? It means well, establishing Stand up that for was... liberal values. Stand up for oh. things that, if they were happening in... <laughs> well, I can guarantee you... Liberal, wow. not, not liberal with a oh. small L. Not liberal it? political. What are liberal liberal like in... From the French Revolution. So you would like side with separation it. Of, like separation of church and state. Um. Equality of women. Who, Pocahontas? <laughs> Pocahontas? Well, no, she's... Look, look, she is... She is it's a, very is a, offensive. You tell me. Oh, oh, really? Oh, I'm sorry about that. Uh, Pocahontas? So what you said? Okay. My mom and dad uh, were very much in love with each other, and they wanted to get married. And my father's parents said, absolutely not. You can't marry her because she's part Cherokee and she's part Delaware. And um, after fighting it as long as they could, my parents went off. They eloped. It was an issue in our family the whole time I grew up about these two families. It was an issue still raised at my mother's funeral. So what I know about my parents is I know that in that little town they grew up in, that my father's parents knew enough about my mother and her family she had no doubt. to say, I have no doubt. Well, let's assume then that that's the, the fact, that you're one thirty second. No, that doesn't tell you. Don't do that. Well, why, why shouldn't I do that? But that is the fact, it, no, is it not? No, it is not. Why not? It's not about the number. There are lots of people who Forget are not enrolled in tribes. Forget the number. You uh, have acknowledged that in that national law directory, you listed yourself as a minority. If your family had an African-American, like you have that grandparent or great-great-grandparent who was a Cherokee, would you call yourself a black and expect African-Americans to accept that? You mean if... If, if that my same, father's, if that same, well, let me think about this. If, if that same my, ancestor was black and not my, a Cherokee. It's not that ancestor. It's if my father's parents had said, you can't marry her because she's yeah, black. We, fine, and that had been that part way. of our family growing up, that we had two different families. You would be comfortable it saying you're black? Part, it, it would be part of identification. Uh, as you know, I think what you're referring to is the fact that Professor Warren claimed that she uh, was a Native American, a person of color. And as you can see, she's not. Uh, that being said, uh, she checked the box and she had an opportunity actually to uh, make a decision throughout her career. When she applied to Penn and Harvard, she checked the box claiming she was a Native American. And, um, you know, clearly she's not. That being said, I don't know and, and neither do the viewers know whether in fact she got uh, ahead as a result of that checking of the box. Uh, but the only way that we'll be able to find that out is to is to have her release her personnel records, have Harvard release their personnel records uh, to make sure that she did not have an advantage that others uh, were entitled to. Uh, so she, you, when you are a United States senator, you have to pass a test, and that's one of character and honesty and truthfulness. And I believe, and others believe, that she's failed that test. I think it was a mistake. Um, I think that if it was, a, as it's said to be, a, a reward for lifelong literary endeavor, then all I can say is that I think the timing was very odd indeed. Uh, I want to say very clearly that I don't believe the Prime Minister had anything whatsoever to do with it. I think it came up from a departmental proposal, which is what usually happens with knighthoods, and that a lot of the political sort of firestorm that started has been started quite in incorrectly. Uh, nevertheless, I think the Department of Culture the, and the media, which I think put his name forward, were not very wise to do it in that way. This is a man who is deeply offended uh, Muslims in a very powerful way, um, who's been protected by the British police against threats of suicide for years and years, at great expense to the taxpayer. And <coughs> frankly, I think that it was not wise and not very clever uh, to give him a knighthood. Just I think that's a contemptible statement and I think everyone who applauded it should be thoroughly ashamed of themselves. Do you think really that it's a waste of time and money defending free expression from uh, suicide murderers? If you do, can you think of a better cause the money should go on? The, when, you, when I hear Idol talk about how this country and this culture could or should punch above its weight, as we say, I think, well, what do we have that's better than our language? And isn't it extraordinary that we have an author who has helped uh, spark a, a renaissance of writing 
in the subcontinent that's produced a whole new branch of English literature that are written in our language, who knows it better than I may say some of our politicians appear to do. Um, Tariq you Ramadan, know, who you may, moment, well, Tariq Ramadan, true, who you may have heard of, who's um, become something of a self-appointed spokesman for Islam in Western Europe, so had the following to say the other day, I, a man with whom I've often disagreed. He said, it is entirely up to the British who they nominate for an award. I hope you'll at least agree with that. Oh, you don't. All right. He went on to say something perhaps you don't know. He said, the protests against it in Pakistan are purely a matter of violent, vicious internal politics there. It's part of a jostling position. People who claim to be offended can, can by all means do so. It takes a lot to make me cry. But people who say, I'm so offended, I'm going to start suicide bombing in my country, have to be told, no, that's an unpardonable interference in our internal affairs. And it shouldn't have been our High Commissioner who was called in by the Pakistani government to be lectured. We should have hauled in the envoy of Pakistan here and said, stop that right now or do without all the aid we give you. Okay. Do without the protection and alliance that you <clears throat> prospered from out of our kindness and generosity. Okay. Racism and bigotry, he's got as his strategic advisor, uh, a person who's a white supremacist, and he's well, now wait, doubling wait, wait, wait. There, down. There, there's no evidence he's a white supremacist. I mean, he obviously, there's, you know, people from, who are white supremacists who support Donald Trump and who support, <laughs> like, Breitbart or Steve Bannon, but. Come on. Well, I mean. Are, are we really, I mean, Steve Bannon has certainly associated himself with white supremacists. Will you go that far? I mean, he, there, there, he, there, there, I, don't, I don't know that you can say, though, he's a white supremacist. I well, mean, he has associated himself with white supremacists. Is that close enough? I mean, this is a guy whose appointment is applauded by the KKK. I mean, what, what Donald Trump is doing is he's putting so far. He has said that he's going to go forward on bigotry and that he's going to go forward on Wall Street insiders. And I think this is a real problem for the American people. I don't think this is where the American people want to go. It's really hard being triggered all the time. And I'm not kidding, it's all the time for me at this point. I get dressed in the morning, I'm triggered. I take a shower, I'm triggered. I get in the car, I'm triggered. I go for a walk, I'm triggered. I leave my house, I'm triggered. I sit in my room all day, I'm triggered. I look at my thin, beautiful sisters and I'm triggered and I just can't get away from it. And it feels at this point that there's nothing I can do. House Democrats right there staging a 16-hour sit-in over gun control, nearly coming to blows over what an enraged Republican congressman sees as the real threat. It's not guns, it's... Incredible. That was on Periscope. Here to react, that enraged lawmaker himself, now much calmer, Texas Congressman Louis Gohmert. Congressman, tell us what brought you to that moment. Well, this has been going on for hours. It should have been stopped hours before. Even some of the long-term Democrats have said, this is really getting out of hand. You guys need to take over and, and stop the chaos. This is a little scary. And uh, it, they fight, the Democrats had taken control of all eight microphones at the point that uh, the footage you showed went, was on. Uh, the microphones were not on, but they had taken over the chamber. Yeah. And this is unprecedented. Uh, it, 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 it was incredible. They were blocking business. So they weren't just standing up for rights. They were taking away rights. And I'm telling you, Brian, it was incredible to see you know, real American folk heroes like John Lewis, who, who were brutalized and stood up for civil rights. Folks were there using the instruments that, that helped gain civil rights to try to take away people's civil rights. And, and I just saw this article, uh, had seen this yesterday, 81,000 names are on the no-fly list, but fewer than 1,000 are Americans. It means if this sure. administration would protect us from people coming in, yeah. and uh, then we wouldn't have to worry but about maybe 1,000 people. Congressman Lewis is on the, the no-fly list. 
Congressman Lewis was on the no-fly list, erroneously, by the way. Well, and so was Martin Luther King Jr. back when uh, it, he was alive. I mean, this is, it's insane yeah. to try to take away our civil rights, our Second Amendment rights. And I'll tell you, the no, the gun-free zones are where these terrorists sure. like to go because they know they're, they're protected. And and then they were fundraising. They're doing yeah. fundraising calls uh, based on the deaths of these people. And, oh, we're standing up for it. It, it, it is just so outrageous what was going on. Right. I want to talk about freedom of speech. Now, don't get me wrong. I love freedom of speech. I wouldn't be able to do this if it wasn't for freedom of speech. But there comes a point where... Freedom of speech crosses a line and just becomes hate speech. A lot of people think that freedom of speech means they can say whatever they want, whenever they want. And to some degree that's true, but a lot of people use this to spread hate and ignorance and just use it to bully people. Man spreading. I'm guessing that's the leg as I'm doing like this. That was a perfect yes. definition. So, yes. What, have you heard the term man spreading? <laughs> no, but I, is that why you asked me? Was I doing it? It can be construed as a, it can be construed as a man spread. Well, it's not too crowded. If there was, if it was like super crowded, I would probably constrict. We have no choice to have our legs like that. You know what I mean? I do. You, you, you feel me? So, <laughs> yeah, so it, it's different for a woman. Yeah. You know what I mean? You know, so, yeah, of course, man. I have to, if you notice, every man on the train has their legs wide open. Am I correct? It's like, that's the problem. Like well, Congressman, the line reads this. Romney's statement on Libya. Email says, this is what Ben was talking about. I assume Ben is the now somewhat famous Ben Rhodes author of the Talking Points Memo. This email is at 1035, 27 minutes after your 1008 statement. 27 minutes after you've told everyone it's a video, while Americans are still fighting because the attack's still going on, your top people are talking politics. Seems to me that night you had three options, Secretary. You could tell the truth, like you did with your family, like you did with the Libyan president, like you did with the Egyptian prime minister. Tell them it was a terrorist attack. You could say, you know what, we're not quite sure. Don't, don't really know for sure. I don't, I don't think the evidence is there. I think it's all in the first one, but you could have done that. But you picked a third option. You picked the video narrative. You picked the one with no evidence, and you did it because Libya was supposed to be, as Mr. Roskin pointed out, this great success story for the Obama White House and the Clinton State Department. And a key campaign theme that year was GM's alive, bin Laden's dead, Al-Qaeda's on the run. And now you have a terrorist attack. And it's a terrorist attack in Libya. And it's just 56 days before an election. You can live with a protest about a video. That won't hurt you. But a terrorist attack will. So you can't be square with the American people. You can tell your family it's a terrorist attack, but not the American people. You can tell the president of Libya it's a terrorist attack, but not the American people. And you can tell the Egyptian prime minister it's a terrorist attack, but you can't tell your own people the truth. Madam Secretary, Americans can live with the fact that good people sometimes give their lives for this country. They don't like it. They mourn for those families. They pray for those families. But they can live with it. But what they can't take, what they can't live with, is... I come to the Senate floor today to ask my Republican colleagues a question. Do you have any idea what year it is? Did you fall down, hit your head, and think you woke up in the 1950s or the 1890s? Should we call for a doctor? Let's be really clear about something. The Republican scheme to defund Planned Parenthood is not some sort of surprised response to a highly edited video. Nope, it's just one more piece of a deliberate, methodical, orchestrated right-wing attack on women's rights. I, I, I don't know what was acceptable in 1890 or what was shocking in 1950. 
Um, the Archbishop of Chicago said, have we so muted the humanity of the unborn child that some consider it acceptable to speak freely of crushing a child's skull to preserve valuable body parts? Was that acceptable in 1890 or 1950? The commerce of body parts, the Archbishop says, of defenseless unborn children is callously discussed over lunch. A woman who spoke yesterday on the Senate floor talks about a sheer disdain for human dignity and a complete disregard for women and their babies. Um, and there are pro-choice people who believe fervently uh, in the right of a woman to choose who are equally uh, repulsed, disgusted by those videos, and more videos are coming out, and they will be worse. They're really bad. They will be worse. And for Elizabeth Warren to try to fight the right of a woman to choose with the horrors and the callousness and the grotesqueness of what was discussed over lunch is really unfortunate. You know, Elizabeth Warren talking about the 1950s and the 1890s, she can talk about it all she wants. There's a great quote. I, I, I don't know the source, but it goes something like, just because we are not shocked by what shocked our grandmothers does not mean we are more advanced. I'm enjoying it. You're loving what? The mansplaining that's going on. What's, what well, just mean? talking me through how, how what you, well, what you, what by you, not answering the question, what you, what you, what you, what you repeating suggesting? processes which are not related to the question that I've asked. What's, what's mansplaining, Senator? Well, it's the slightly patronising and condescending way that you're responding to my questions. Well, I would suggest, Senator, that if you're putting the word man in front of uh, some description of what I'm doing, you're doing that which I'm sure you're very much against, is making a, a sexist implication about how I'm conducting my role well, as a man. Well, then the easiest is that way what, to do is that it... What, is that what well, you're saying, Senator? Well, what I'm saying is that the way you've been responding to me has been patronising and condescending, and I have responded to that. So the easiest by, by, by way to deal with this is not, is, not Ima to, imagine, Senator, is not to, to have that I way in woman responding splaining. to the questions imagine I've Imagine the asked. reaction, Senator, if I said you were woman splaining. You're saying that I'm mansplaining. Well, it is a term that's used. Is it when, by whom? Well, by it rude, is a term that's used. By rude, doesn't, doesn't make by rude senators. Uh, by senators no. who are seeking to make gender an issue. And Donald Trump disrespects, aggressively disrespects, more than half the human beings in this country. He thinks that because he has money that he can call women fat pigs and bimbos. He thinks because he is a celebrity that he can rate women's bodies from one to ten. He thinks that because he has a mouth full of Tic Tacs that he can force himself on any woman within groping distance. Well, I got news for you, Donald Trump. Women have had it with guys like you. And, and nasty women have really had it with guys like you. Yeah. Get this, Donald. Nasty women are tough. Nasty women are smart. And nasty women vote. Hey, if you were a little kid and never looked at another little kid's vagina, well, congrats to you. Her words, shave my armpit, shave my vagina. I'll be smoother than a newborn rat. I'll have less hair than a prepubescent boy scout. If I can't shave it, I'll bleach it. If I can't bleach it, I'll wax it. If I can't wax it, I will pay thousands of dollars to have a tiny laser beam kill all of my hair follicles so I'll never grow body hair again. Stupid evolutionary development, who needs you? Not women. Shave my upper lip, shave my eyebrows, shave the bottoms of my feet. Look at me. I'm a pretty hairless decoration. It does not look like that. It's a clump of motherfucking cells. No hands are shown through that time. You're just a white fucking privileged racist fucking male that doesn't stand for women's rights. Get the fuck out of here, you fucking dipshit. And get that camera out of my face, either. Are fuck you? with. Uh, I'm gonna call the police. Fuck you. Will, 
Riley, 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 Riley. Hold on a second. Fuck witch. We are calling the police, ma'am. You are fucking white male privileged assholes. I'm calling the police right now. What you are is a racist motherfucker as well. How dare you fucking do this kind of shit, asshole? You're being videotaped. We will return this to the police. Go ahead. Go right the fuck on ahead, you fucking sexist, misogynistic motherfuckers. That is all you are. You don't give a shit about women. You don't give a shit about life. All you are are just a bunch of fucking assholes. Are you calling the police? Are you calling the I ask leave of the Senate to continue my remarks. Is there objection? Object. I appeal the ruling. Object. Objection is heard. The senator will take her seat.